Hello, everyone. My name is oh, Mike. Michael, dinner's ready. Mom, I told you I'm not hungry. I'm filming a video for YouTube. Dag. <sighs> Hello, everyone. My name is Mike, and this is the Board Cyborg. Welcome back to yet another episode. Today I'm going to do another sub collection video. You guys seem to be liking these. I did my Scream Factory one, my Arrow video, an Academy one. And now today I'm going to show you my Kino Lorber or just my Kino. Kino has a couple offshoots like Redemption, things like that for European horror from the 70s, 60s. Um, Kino Lorber and then just Kino. So they, they've got a few different sort of uh, sub names under their main umbrella. I think I've got all of my Kino stuff here ready to go So I'd love to know what your favorite Kino or Kino Lorber or Redemption releases are So feel free to leave those down in the comments below and we can get a little discussion rolling now My Kino collection does consist mostly of horror of course But uh, there is a vast array of different genres here from crime to action uh, to sci-fi things like that So let's jump right in in no particular order First up here is ZPG, otherwise known as Zero Population Growth. This one I actually haven't seen. I actually cracked it open a couple weeks ago when I was sort of doing a, a 70s sci-fi sort of thing, which kicked off with Andromeda Strain. Um, I opened this, but never popped it in. This one is directed by Michael Campus from 72 and stars Oliver Reed. It's always a blast to watch Oliver Reed, especially at this time in his life when he was kind of a raging alcoholic. It's always fun to watch him ham it up. I love him. I love his performances. So uh, looking forward to checking out Zero Population Growth. I would imagine it has something to do with uh, government saying that we can't have any more kids or the characters in this story. So ZPG. Next up is Cast a Giant Shadow. I actually haven't opened this one up yet. I sold my DVD off a while ago to just basically fund the Blu-ray. So I did just that. Don't know much about this film. It's a war film. Next up, Black Sunday, Mario Bava. Like I said, these are gonna have no rhyme or reason here. Um, not in any particular order. Black Sunday, one of my favorite Bava films. In fact, I believe it was the first Bava film I had seen from 1960 in black and white. Glorious, beautiful black and white. God, Bava shot a hell of a black and white film. Black Sunday blew me away with its themes that were way ahead of its time for 1960. Barbara Steele is in this, she is excellent. I love Black Sunday. Oh yeah, next up, the Fritz Lang silent films. Man, this has Metropolis, Die Nibelungen, Spies, Dr. Mabuse, the gambler, uh, Dr. Mabuse, the gambler, forgive me, Destiny, The Spiders, Woman in the Moon, Four Around the Woman, Harakiri, The Wandering Shadow, and The Plague of Florence, Here which is awesome to have all of these collected a little dusty because it's usually on the top shelf now i gotta be honest i haven't seen many fritz long films in fact i've only seen one and parts of d nibelungen part one um the film that i've seen by him is m with peter Lorre, which is absolutely fucking fantastic if you haven't seen it check out m definitely falls into the horror category for sure excellent performance by Lori. that is not on this set because that wasn't a silent film looking forward to cracking into this and finally watching metropolis for Christ's sake, can you believe I haven't seen that movie yet? Anyway, Fritz Long, The Silent Films, one of my prized possessions, to be quite honest. And I'll show you guys, of course. Got a little booklet, yeah? And, of course, the little digibook packaging here, which is just, oh, look at that. Just wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. So, I am so excited and grateful to own this. Next up is Adios Sabata. Actually, I might as, well, might as well show all of the Sabata films here. Sabata, Return of Sabata, and Adios Sabata. The first two, I believe, star Lee Van Cleef. Yep, and the third one is Yul Brynner. These are directed by Frank Kramer. I don't know if he directed all of them. It looks like he directed all of them. This is a trilogy of spaghetti westerns that I've not seen. In fact, it says on the back that they are Spanish and Italian productions. So I am looking forward to cracking into these. I picked these up years ago on a Kino sale. They were like six bucks a piece. I was like, I'll take them. I'm looking forward to cracking into the Sabata trilogy. Oh yeah. A Fistful of Dynamite, AKA Duck, you sucker. This movie has one of the greatest villain introductions, I think, in history. It's like a 20, 25 minute introduction. Maybe not. Maybe like 15, 20 minutes. Rod Steiger plays a villain not unlike Eli Wallach's character from Good, Bad, and the Ugly, Tuco. Very, very similar sort of character, but he has his own 
uh, sort of <laughs> pathology going on, but um, he's a likable character. He's one of those awful, awful characters that you end up uh, empathizing with, or at least sympathizing with, I should say, uh, by the end of the film. This is such a great, underrated Leone film. All of Leone's films that he did are fantastic. This was, uh, I want to say, his last? Is that right? Yeah, his final Western. It says right on the back. So, Duck You Sucker is amazing, and I love that title. Much more so than Fistful of Dynamite, which is a good one. But Duck You Sucker is fantastic. <laughs> love this movie. Cherry 2000. Such a weird, post-apocalyptic, sort of feministic sci-fi film. <laughs> um, with Melanie Griffith. Directed by Steve DeJarnot. I never, I've never heard of him. I don't know what else he've, he's done. Obviously, I have heard of him. I've seen Cherry 2000. Just a fun, quirky, weird, entertaining sci-fi film from the 80s that not many people talk about. Cherry 2000. By the way, wow. The artwork. And I think that is original artwork. And that is just, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this film, I forgot. Harry Carey Jr., Ben Johnson, Lawrence Fishburne, Brian James. What a cast. What a cast. And that's only the supporting cast. Oh, silent, silent era classic here. Faust, F.W. Murnau. I've actually not seen this one in full. I've seen so many bits and pieces of these movies back in the day. Before I could afford them, I would go on YouTube and watch, and, and just the internet, and try to look at pictures and videos of whatever I could see from the silent era. It always had this mystique for me. So that is Faust, F.W. Murnau. Looking forward to watching this one day. This is another one I haven't seen, actually. A modern Kino release here. This is A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which is a mouthful, but... It's got a booklet, got a nice little digipack here with the Blu-ray. And I remember I got this one at Second and Charles. And it's a vampire film from Lebanon? I may have just made that up. I'm, it's in Farsi. I'm going to have to double check. Is it Iranian? Ah, ah, ah. Another silent era classic that I've yet to see. I, I got to admit, guys... I've seen a bunch of silent era stuff, and I love it. It's going to become one of my favorite decades, you know, the 20s. But I'm also savoring the decade, because there aren't many horror films. You can count the horror films from the decade on a couple hands uh, that are able to be seen in, in 2020. And I'm really savoring a lot of these. So The Phantom of the Opera with Lon Chaney is one that I'm savoring. This is... This is like the one that put Lon Chaney on the map from like 1925. I know he was working with Universal before that. Hunchback of Notre Dame, I think, was Universal. But uh, The Phantom of the Opera, can't wait to see this. I mean, iconic imagery. Imagery. You guys all have seen that image. In fact, it might be on my shirt here somewhere. <laughs> I forget. But uh, pretty awesome. Another silent era classic that I haven't seen or even opened, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This one is actually from the 1920, yeah. John Barrymore. So this is even, this is uh, one of Lon Chaney's contemporaries, actually, uh, John Barrymore. And I have not seen any John Bar Barrymore films. So looking forward to his version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, one of the earliest known versions that is available <laughs> in 2020. So, pretty awesome Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh yeah. Planet of the Vampires. This is a 1965 film by Marty Mario Bava. Mario. <laughs> Mario Bava, one of my favorite directors as I've said already in this video. This film looks just fantastic. It's one of his color films and it just it looks beautiful. He always shoots his films so well. The effects are great in this. The costume design is way ahead of its time, and I think highly influential, actually. The creatures are creepy in this. It's a space vampire sort of scenario, a planet of vampires, obviously, that start to overtake the uh, crew. It is awesome. Planet of the Vampires is so cool and so influential. Definitely inspired things like Alien and Aliens, for sure. Oh, yeah. Rawhead Rex with a nice little full slip cover there. Rawhead Rex, I believe this was the first film, or at least first big film, that was based on Clive Barker's work, uh, Rawhead Rex in this case. I don't know if he wrote the script. In fact, it's right in front of me. Oh, uh, yeah, he did. He wrote the screenplay, which is cool. He did Rawhead Rex, which is a super fun monster movie. I know Clive Barker doesn't care for it too much, but it is so much fun. You can't go wrong with a few friends and Rawhead Rex. Here's one I haven't seen, but I sold my DVD months back and, and picked up the Blu-ray because it was like, I made money doing so. So, Space Camp. Space Camp. Next up, again, sold my DVD months and months. Actually, this was about a year, maybe two years ago? Sold my DVD of this, and then Kino was having a sale. I made out like a bandit. 
The Martian Chronicles. I've actually not opened this yet. This is Rock Hudson in a TV miniseries from the 70s based on Ray Bradbury's book, Martian Chronicles. I don't know much about the story, so looking forward to cracking this one day. Unforgettable. This is an underrated mid-90s, I want to say 95, Ray Liotta sci-fi action thriller. Uh, really cool film. Linda Fiorentino, Ray Liotta. Who directed this one? John Dahl. Really like Unforgettable. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Like I said, it's one of those mid-90s sci-fi films that just sort of came and went. Nobody talks about today. Um, and I love when Kino sort of digs in the vaults and finds these films and brings them back to light. I uh, haven't cracked the Blu-ray yet here, but I watched this a couple times back when I owned the DVD. So, very cool. War Gods of the Deep. Honestly, not one of the best Vincent Price movies I've seen. He's there. His, his presence sort of carries the... Uh, the second and third act of this movie, but the first act is really sort of slow, setting up the lore, and just not a great Vincent Price movie, but no Vincent Price movie, in my opinion, is is bad. So, who directed this one? Jacques Tourneau. Wow, uh, the guy who did Cat People. So that is War Gods of the Deep. Twice Told Tales. I get mixed up with some of these Poe anthology films from the 60s and early 70s, mostly from the 60s. Twice Told Tales from 63. Yeah, I... I'm sure I've seen this. What does it have on it? Uh, Dr. Heidegger's Experiment, Rappuccini's Daughter in the House of Seven Gables. Maybe I haven't seen this one. I really don't know. But that is Twice Told Tales. House of Whipcord. This is actually a Pete Walker film I haven't seen. I've only seen a few Pete Walker films. Frightmare being one that I can think of off the top of my head. That may be the only one, actually. And I loved Frightmare. Super weird British horror from the 70s. And uh, this is more super weird British horror from the, from the mid-70s. So I'm looking forward to House of Whipcord. This is probably his most popular uh, or famous film. I'll have to check it out someday soon. Oh my god. Jean Roland. This is the first Jean Roland film that I had seen, and The Grapes of Death is such an underrated zombie flick, man. Nobody talks about this French zombie flick from 1978. It is so cool. Basically, a, a, a grape vineyard, um, a wine vineyard, basically, gets... Uh, some sort of parasite and it gets into the wine and people drink the wine and they start to break out and turn into zombie-like creatures. It is so cool and has a lot to say about what we're doing to our food supply and I love Grapes of Death. I always want to say Grapes of Wrath. It's a play on that. Grapes of Death. The Blood Beast Terror. I have seen this, but it's not the greatest uh, hammer sort of wannabe. I don't even think this is Amicus, actually. Uh, the Blood Beast Terror is sort of a Sherlock Holmes werewolf story. Uh, sort of, um, what's the, what's the one? Uh, and then there were none, or like an Agatha Christie sort of setup where a bunch of people are in a home, and they're trying to figure out who the werewolf is, and Peter Cushing sent in to, to figure this out. He's sort of the Sherlock holmes kind of character. Ah, it's okay. Decent effects. It's fun. It's got some atmosphere to it. Not a bad movie. The Living Dead Girl. I think this is one of his more, uh, erotic films. That is Jean Roland. And, um, I've tried to, uh, penetrate... <laughs> the uh, exotic horror genre, subgenre, but it's hard for me to do so. Maybe Roland will be my ticket in, because Jesus Franco definitely isn't. But I haven't seen The Living Dead Girl. Looking forward to this one. This is a weird one. I, I had this DVD and uh, traded it out basically for the Blu-ray here. Candy. Now listen to this friggin' cast. Marlon Brando, Charles Aznavour, which is like a French singer uh richard burton james coburn john houston walter Matthau, ringo Starr, john astin elsa martinelli sugar ray robinson <laughs> like what the hell like the wildest cast from the from the late 60s you can imagine candy not seen it know nothing about it <laughs> wow. life stinks um a mel brooks film that i've actually not seen um it, i have the mel brooks collection on blu-ray which has basically all of his great films his really well-known ones Life Stinks isn't one of his more well-known films, and I, he did direct it. Yeah, he produced and directed it, and of course helped write it, so can't be that bad. Life Stinks, Mel Brooks. Ah, uh, this is a good one. A uh, little underrated 70s flick here. The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. I, I love... I love titles like that from the 70s. In fact, I have a, a story of my own called Little Mary and the Wind Chime, which is inspired by titles like this. Love this movie. Martin Sheen, young Martin Sheen, really young Jodie Foster, who sort of f***ing with Martin Sheen's mind. It's been a while, forgive me, but she's sort of getting in the mind of people and manipulating them. And it, it's a really interesting flick. I remember really enjoying it. So check out Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. Real Men. A lot. <laughs> Kino puts out the weirdest shit sometimes. Real Men. This is a comedy starring John Ritter and James Belushi. Jim Belushi. 
Um, I don't even know where to start. It's a comedy. It's a it's a a sci-fi sort of comedy where John Ritter's character it follows aliens that are. <laughs> The government is trying to get a glass of water to these aliens so that these aliens could study it. I, it's the weirdest fucking movie, but it is entertaining. And uh, Ritter and Belushi have some some pretty good chemistry. So that is Real Men. Marty. Actually, I, I haven't seen Marty. And I hear this is Borgnine's, Ernest Borgnine's best performance. And so for that, I am looking forward to it. I love Ernest Borgnine. Every time I, he's on screen, he just makes you smile. He's a jovial old actor, and I... I can't wait to check out Marty, which, again, I hear is his best performance. I believe he won an Oscar for this, if not at least was nominated. So, very cool. Marty. Another one I'm ashamed to admit that I have not seen yet as a horror fan. I don't even like admitting this. I gotta be honest. But that is The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, another F.W. Murnau film I've yet to see. I am slacking. I know this was in my top ten films I haven't seen list that I did on YouTube. Ah, I've got to see this. German... Expressionism, 1920. I mean, this is some of the earliest horror that was so influential to, on, uh, you know, to Hollywood, on Hollywood, and I can't wait to watch Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. But apparently I can wait, since I haven't seen the damn movie yet. But I can't wait to see it, I swear. Here's a Murnau film that I have seen, of course, multiple times. That is Nosferatu. This is the beautiful Kino restoration with the nice full-bodied slipcover there. And tons of extras. This is just gloriously restored. Oh my god. It blows me away when I watch films from the 20s and 30s on Blu-ray. How good they look. How how much care has gone into these, these releases by Kino and other companies. Nosferatu. No Retreat, No Surrender. One of the few Van Damme films made before 2002 that I haven't seen. Now, he's not the lead in here, but this was his first, this was his breakout role. You know, so you got Kurt McKinney, the protagonist, Jean-Claude, the antagonist. Guess whose career went somewhere? So I am looking forward to this. I've actually seen the sequel to this, uh, No Sur no Tr Retreat, No Surrender 2 with Lauren Avedon, and I think it's Cynthia Rothrock's in that. I, I love that movie. Tons of fun. So I'm anticipating this to be fun as well. Delta Force 2. I actually haven't seen Delta Force 2, but I do have the Blu-ray here by Kino. So, Chuck Norris, motherfucker. Oh, man, this is one of my favorite movies here that I've I've talked about thus far. One of my favorites. Oh, I love this movie. It's in my top 100, actually, of all time. The Taking of Pelham 123. Now, the there is a remake of this by Tony Scott, which is passable at best. Not one of his better films. It was later in his career. But The Taking of Pelham 123 is a masterpiece. This is a heist masterpiece. Uh, basically, a heist in the New York subways. Quentin Tarantino was in influenced by this in terms of the names of the characters, Mr. Pink, Mr. Brown, um, all the characters, all the thieves in this that robbed the subway train are named that way, just like in Reservoir Dogs. Walter Matthau, just a tour de force performance by him. Matthau and, oh my God, Robert Shaw is the main villain and he is fantastic. The score, oh, I love this movie so much, I can't contain myself. Martin Balsam, Hector Elizondo, just a great cast, Joseph Sargent, Directs one of the best heist films ever. Super New York feel. I love this film from the 70s. The Taking of Pelham 123. Shattered. This is actually a Wolfgang Peterson film uh, that I've seen. A thriller. Very good. Uh, I'll say a solid Bob Hoskins sort of psychological thriller. It has twists and turns along the way. It has some kind of obvious twists that you sort of see coming, especially when you're as seasoned as a lot of us are with these sorts of movies. But that doesn't take away from the great performances, the solid direction, and the overall good story. So Tom Berenger, um, I forget who else was in this. Tom Berenger, Bob Hoskins, Greta Scacchi, just an overall solid film. That is shattered. Here's a film from 89 that I haven't seen, The Package. This is Andrew Davis, uh, before Andrew Davis would hit big with The Fugitive, um, Harrison Ford from the 90s. This is from the late 80s, and I've yet to see it. <laughs> Gene Hackman, <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. I am looking forward to this one. It seems like sort of an action political thriller, so I am looking forward to it. The Package. Madhouse. Now, I haven't seen this one in... <sighs> It's got to be about a decade, but I, I seem to remember, this is Cushing and Price, okay, so right there, worth the ticket of admission. 
Cushing and Price playing off of one another. And I believe, as far as I remember, they're, they're actors vying for a position. And it's been a long time, guys. Forgive me. It is obviously time for me to rewatch this. This is directed by James Clark. So that is Madhouse. Man on Fire. Not a lot of people know that the Denzel film that was directed by Tony Scott was actually a movie from the 80s. What's it? 87, I want to say. And um, this one actually stars Scott Glenn as a bodyguard, and I'm assuming it's pretty much the same story. The movie, which was made into a Tony Scott big-budget action film with Denzel, uh, but this is the original with Scott Glenn, so I, I picked it up for that reason. I'm interested in checking this out. Oh, yeah. We're getting into some good shit now, baby. Canon Pictures. Revenge of the Ninja. One of the best ninja films you could watch ever. This is from 1983. Uh, this this is part of the reason why the United States and North America was so obsessed with ninjas in the 80s and 90s. These films inspired countless video games like Ninja Gaiden and Shinobi, anything like that. Even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all that kind of stuff. I really do feel like canon really kicked it off in the early 80s with Enter the Ninja, which I might as well show here, and uh, Revenge of the Ninja with Shokosugi which are just phenomenal films. There is a third film in this series that really isn't related uh, loosely, I'll say. It is a more of a horror martial arts film uh, called Ninja 3 Domination, and it is glorious, and I believe Sam Furstenberg did it. It is glorious. It's about, a, the, the beginning of the film is like 20 minutes on a golf course with a ninja just chopping up people <laughs> surreptitiously. It is fantastic. Oh man, Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja. Just Sam Furstenberg did this one. And who did the original? Oh, wow. Golan did it. Okay, directed by Menahem. Menahem Golan, when they were still directing some of the movies they were producing. So Sam Furstenberg and Golan love these movies. Here's another one, actually. The Challenge. The Challenge. This is um, Toshiro Mifune from Yojimbo and a whole bunch of Kurosawa films, Seven Samurai. Who else is in this? Who's that? Oh, Scott. Oh, more Scott Glenn, of course. More Scott Glenn. And this is uh, Frankenheimer. This is John Frankenheimer entering the ring with an American-Japanese samurai-esque movie. I've not seen it. Can't wait to see this, though. Honestly, this is one I really am looking forward to watching, so... That is the challenge. This is such a cool old serial, The Adventures of Captain Marvel. Uh, a lot of you would know Captain Marvel as Shazam. Uh, they had to change his name because of legal issues in the 60s, I want to say, with actual Marvel and DC. Anyway, Adventures of Captain Marvel is a, I don't know, 10 to 12 part series, uh, serial, I should say, something like that. It is just a blast to watch. The action is actually really, really well done and exciting for the time. The stunt work is really cool. This is really old. This is early 40s, so 1941. And it is just glorious to watch. I love watching old serials, see where all the, the big directors like Spielberg and Lucas got their inspiration. This is definitely one of them. Love this. Love this serial. Trouble Man, starring Robert Hooks. Love me some Trouble Man. I actually haven't seen the Blu-ray. Watched the DVD about a year or two ago and then replaced it with the Blu-ray. It's a great black exploitation film with Robert Hooks kicking ass and taking names. Oh, and Marvin Gaye does the soundtrack for this bad boy, and it is so damn good. Not only the soundtrack, but a lot of the score and the mood pieces. Ugh. If you like Marvin Gaye, you like film, check out Trouble Man. I actually got a couple DVDs here, believe it or not. Billion Dollar Brain which is a Ken Russell film that I haven't seen with Michael Caine. And Convoy, which is a Peckinpah, Sam Peckinpah film from the 78, from 78 that I haven't seen with Chris Christopherson. And, oh my God, I always forget her name from uh, Getaway. Allie McGraw, I love Allie McGraw. So I'm looking forward to checking out Convoy. Sam Peckinpah, can't go wrong. The Island of Dr. Moreau. This is the one from 1977 starring Burt Lancaster as the Doctor and Michael York as the castaway. I'm sure you've seen this story in some capacity. Guy ends up on an island, turns out the Doctor is doing some crazy genetic experiments with people and animals, and he's gone mad, and uh, it's, it's a great story, classic story by H.G. Wells. The Island of Dr. Moreau from 77. I'm gonna get you, sucker. This is a black exploitation parody film from Wayans, Keenan Ivory Wayans, actually. So they were doing parody stuff back in the 80s before uh, Sean and Marlon and Damon would take over. I'm gonna get you, sucker is just a great movie. If you're a fan of black exploitation and have seen a bunch of them, you're gonna get a kick out of this. Even if you haven't seen a bunch of black exploitation, you'll still get a kick out of this because it's just a well made parody comedy movie. Love it. 
Haven't seen it on Blu-ray yet. Watched it a bunch of times with my father on DVD. and um, But I'm looking forward to checking out the Blu-ray at some point. Down to the last three. We got Burnt Offerings. Yes, this is a TV movie with Oliver Reed from 76. Um, big director, too. Dan Curtis. Ah, ah, Dan Curtis. <laughs> Damn Skippy. Burnt Offerings is a really interesting haunted house television movie from the 70s. What stands out from this one is Oliver Reed's drunken performance. He actually plays an alcoholic, if I, if I remember correctly. So he was an alcoholic playing an alcoholic. And R.I.P., homie. Burnt Offerings, I also remember the house sort of repairing itself and shifting around and, and fixing itself up when it got damaged and things like that. Really creepy sort of imagery. Really cool haunted house flick that not many people talk about. Dan Curtis made TV movies like nobody else's business. So that is Burnt Offerings. One that I'm ashamed to have not seen yet. That is The Mark of Zorro with Tyrone Power from 1940. As, as an action fan, I'm looking forward to going back to the 30s and 40s and even the 20s with Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Uh, to really dig into those films, to see what we know and love today in action, to see where it all started from the 20s and 30s. Tyrone Power was one of the big ones um, playing Zorro, obviously, so I'm looking forward to watching The Mark of Zorro at some point. I know this is going to blow me away, just like The Adventures of Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. And I need to watch more Flynn movies, more Fairbanks movies, and more Tyrone Power films. That is absolute. But that is the mark of Zorro. Last, but certainly not least, this is one I haven't opened yet, but I watch this film at least once a year. That is Black Sabbath. Mario Bava, once again, makes, makes an appearance on this list. This is so influential. This has one of the first examples of a sort of... Um, it's, it's Jalo, but it's sort of a, a killer stalking a woman over the phone. Has one of the first examples of that. By the way, this is an anthology film. I think it has three different segments. The most memorable being the last one with Boris Karloff, who plays some sort of a mythological strigoi or like a vampire-esque being, but he can only feed on the blood of loved ones, which is such a great freaking idea. Oh my god, I love it. Karloff kills it. This is 1963, so this was nearing the end of the brilliant man's career. One of his best, one of Bava's best, one of the best of the 60s. And without this, we may not have a little metal band, heavy rock band, called Black Sabbath. So, thanks for that, Bava. I just want to thank you guys for checking out my Kino Lorber collection. Quite a few. I mean, I have to have at least 30 or 40 without counting. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave your favorites down below. Or if you don't see your favorites in my collection, let me know what your favorite rele re release is. And we can get a little discussion rolling. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications anyway guys i will see you next time bored cyborg out oh michael all right mom jeez